Welcome again to Food All You Never Wanted to Know. This is what happens when you spray squash bugs with a mixture of Dawn dish soap and water. A very thick percentage. I think it was half and half. I'll tell you, they try to get away, but they suffocate. I think I'm picking these squash. Remember this one? So cute. This is going to be fun. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> Alrighty. I might just have to take my trusty knife and cut it. Well, I finally got it apart. <laughs> it's nice and orange inside. I would have waited longer to cut it if I didn't have to cut it. So, from those four plants, this is what we got. Six. Some of them are really beautiful, nice size. And then we had some smaller ones. I'll wait until they're totally, totally orangey before, before eating the other ones. Definitely gonna save seeds, save the seeds on this one. Again, this is Sanka butternut squash. It does fine, as you can see. And next year, I know to look out for the squash bugs early on and not allow them to take over. And also, I'll be growing them in I think an outdoor spot so they can get a little bit more water than they did but I think for for what it was this was a drought situation in here extremely hot I'm kind of impressed that they did this well so I do want to mention here I grew it last year I think I only grew one plant and got a few off of it I, I grew them outside and it was a very, very sweet squash. Very dense, very heavy. These are extremely heavy for their size. Very compact. We ate that one squash last night. It was wonderful. It was very good. We baked it in the oven. I sliced down the middle and put it in the oven at maybe 400 degrees, 425. Just bake it till it's good and soft. Anyway, I forgot to show this part, but I used this colander for the seeds, and you need to spray. Use a good spray, and with your hands, just kind of get all the, as much of the pulp as possible off. And then, you spread them out. This is a nice dish, it doesn't have to be fancy. <laughs> it can be a plastic, whatever. But you wanna, you wanna have something that at least has some sort of an edge. You can't really see this. The edge goes up so you don't have seeds that are falling all over the place every time the plate gets bumped. Um, if you notice, um, let's see, a couple seeds that are sort of flat. This one is undeveloped. Can you see that? Don't keep those ones. Not that it will hurt anything, but those will not germinate or do well because there's there's no life in them. So you stretch these out and as the days go by and as they dry, just move them around, separate them more so they don't stick together. There's nothing magical about this. All right, here are the Sanka butternut. Again, we ate the one, so there are only five here. It's interesting, some were short and squatty and two were long. So, anyway, but they're very, again, they're very heavy. Now that they're cleaned up, they look a little better. Um, the phone is making it look a lighter color, but it's more like a buff orange, tannish color. Anyway, um, the Waltham butternut, I think, may be a more prolific variety. And I think next year I'm... I'm going to not seed save next year, and I'm going to grow both kinds side by side, giving them the exact same treatment to see how they do. I want to see if, if their yields and flavor, how they do against each other, and also if the Waltham is a little bit more squash, <laughs> squash bug resistant. We'll see. I don't know if that's true, but here are the seeds. 
they're pretty much dry, but I'm going to still give them a few more days. Imagine even if each plant only got one squash, which is not terribly good. This is like gold, folks. <laughs> Seeds like this are worth way more than money if you want food, if you know how to grow. It's important to learn how to grow things now before there's a big crisis in your life of some type where you don't have the ability to buy fresh vegetables. Um, to be able to grow something yourself um, without any help from anybody else is a really, really good skill to develop. So we have that. And if we come over here, I'm going to show a little bit about seed saving these. I mentioned I wouldn't be able to grow these and Waltham butternut at the same time because they are, they are the same squash family as one another. So if I grow them anywhere nearby, I don't know if it's a mile, however far away it is, it has to be really, really far apart from one another, they could cross and you'll lose the variety. Now, the Waltham, Waltham butternut is a very common butternut. Sanka butternut is rare, very rare. Uh, it does have some qualities that are interesting and good and very they're very dense, they're sweet, but the Waltham butternut is also pretty sweet. So that's why I want to compare them. Now this book, Seed to Seed by Suzanne Ashworth, this is the newer edition. Um, I use this as, as a reference book. It's not a book you would just read for fun. <laughs> but the Moshada, it tells you which, which kinds of squash are Moshadas and um, butternut is one, cheese pumpkin, Tahitian, Seminole, sweet potato, Tennessee sweet potato. This is very, um, this isn't very, very important to know. There are at least two other squash varieties or squash families that you could grow at the same time as a butternut and they will not cross with one another. So that's good to know. So, Try growing some stuff. I This is a good experiment for me. And for next year, I'm kind of excited to do an actual experiment instead of, instead of what I did this year. And now you know, and you know to avoid the squash vine borer, but I still got some wonderful squash. And I'm gonna be probably buying some long neck pumpkin, which is sort of a butternut type squash from some people up the street. Uh, who have a farm and also probably at the auction because we eat a lot of butternut type squash in the winter. So this is food. All you never wanted to know. Please share, please like, and subscribe. Take care.